Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us join now together in Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia.
A reading from the book of Numbers. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each heard them speaking in the the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, and our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, 
as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this thought was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. And the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, and welcome to the Sunday of Pentecost, as well as the first day of June. None of us could have predicted that we'd still be worshiping remotely on this date, but the return of warmth and growth is as welcome as always. Our lectionary for today gives a few options for what readings we'll hear. And I chose these specific selections for two reasons. First, they're not the typical selections you might hear on this date, and it's nice to hear something different on occasion. And second, the Hebrew Bible and the Gospel reading provide a helpful contrast for what I want to talk about today. In our Gospel selection, The author, John, expands on the action and speech of Jesus, as is his custom, and he writes, Now Jesus said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. 
for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now, if we set aside first any deeper explorations of what John or Jesus might have meant by this, notice the obvious layperson's surface interpretation that the Spirit of God only existed, or at least was only received in people, after Jesus' glorification, that is, his ascension. So, what's the problem here? Well, it's twofold. First, this passage and others similar to it in John and other parts of the New Testament have been used by the Christian Church to create the heresy of supersessionism, that is, the teaching that Christianity is entirely superior to and meant to entirely replace Judaism. This teaching is behind thousands of years of prejudice, forced conversions, and pogroms. It was only officially revoked, renounced, by the major Catholic and Protestant churches after the Holocaust exposed its true horror. And ever since then, we've been working as theologians and pastors and preachers to revise those traditional interpretations and uses of passages such as this. The second problem is the simple existence of stories throughout the Hebrew Scriptures which attest to the work of the Spirit, including the one from Numbers we heard today. The book of Numbers is named for the numbering which happens at one point, which makes it sound as appetizing to most of us as an accounting textbook might be. But there's quite a bit of storytelling that goes on around the numbering sequence, and in the 11th chapter, we find ourselves in the middle of some real drama. The context is that the Israelites, who have recently been rescued from slavery in Egypt and miraculously provided with daily food in the middle of the desert, start complaining. Again, and not for the last time. As it often is, the complaint is about food. They aren't happy with the vegetarian diet, and they start wailing all throughout the camps for meat. They aren't content with freedom and provision. They want variety and flavor. Don't we all? Just before this selection of verses, we get one of the classic Moses stories. He's so fed up with this whining that he tells God, why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all the people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised and on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat for all this people. For they come weeping to me, and they say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. How passive-aggressive and melodramatic is that? And with God, for heaven's sake. This guy is not shy about his feelings. And God listens, God understands, and God delegates. Moses is told to gather around 70 elders from all over the community to share both his burden and his gift, that of the Spirit of God. And word gets out, literally. Two of the elders don't make it to the tent before the Spirit rests on them. And folks all around the camp hear them prophesy. A couple of younger men, loyal to Moses, are outraged on behalf of their true leader. And they report immediately, thinking that Moses will want to squash this rebellion against his authority as the only speaker for God to the people. 
But to their surprise, Moses says, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on all of them. So the first point here is to note that in contrast to what John seems to be claiming, or at least how he's often been read, the Spirit was alive and active in God's people 1,400 years before Jesus' ascension. The second is the plea of Moses, that all God's people would be prophets, something that the prophet Joel writes about in the quote included in the Acts of the Apostle reading today, and which Peter claims is fulfilled during that first Christian Pentecost. And third, if God's desire is for all to be prophets, and the Spirit is given to all to that purpose, which is the pattern throughout the Hebrew Bible, then what does it mean to be a prophet? Now, our modern understanding of prophecy often shares more with the ancient Greek tradition than the Hebrew one. When we think of prophecy as only predicting the future, as a storyteller might, we're thinking more of a Greek oracle than what many Hebrew prophets said and did. The Hebrew terms navi, for men, and nevia, for women, describe people who engaged in a wide range of activity. They were involved in intercessory prayer, in dancing, in drumming, in singing, and in teaching and interpreting religious law and custom. They delivered oracles on behalf of God, sometimes in ecstasy or occasionally in demonstration. They resolved disputes, they worked wonders, they determined when to go to war, they mustered troops and fought battles, they archived their oracles in writing, and experienced visions. Now those who were exclusively seers and visionaries were named instead by other terms. And others who practiced professions of dreaming or divination were given even other labels and largely, though not exclusively, condemned as against God's vision for his people. So the Navi themselves were a more complicated and practical bunch. Yes, some Hebrew prophets had ecstatic visions and made predictions of future events, but others function in ways that we today might call religious leadership, theology, social justice activism, or performance art. For instance, the prophet Ezekiel lies on his side for 390 days, only to then switch sides for another 40 days to depict the captivity of Israel and Judah. Jeremiah uses his own dirty underwear as an object lesson. Amos practically invents religious ethics, universal monotheism, and social justice single-handedly in his traveling sermons. And here in the book of Numbers, we see that to prophesy seems to indicate proclamations of authority and leadership in practical matters, such as dealing with complaints over the daily menu. This reminds me of the one reading which was left out of our lectionary today in favor of the reading from Numbers. That is, when Paul lists the various gifts of the body in his first letter to the Corinthians. There he says that there are many gifts and ministries in the church, all flowing from the same Spirit and the same God for the common good. Speaking wisdom and knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, oracles, discernment, tongues, and more are all faucets of this Spirit's presence, of prophesying, and in certain Christian circles today, we also talk of social activism, peace work, and the seeking of justice and equality in a world that too often 
is still mired in racism and bigotry as prophetic acts. After all, most Hebrew prophets were either leaders or advisors of leaders or condemners of leaders. Unlike priests, they were expected to be working in the public square. In that way, I believe we are all called to what we might consider the prophethood of all believers. The term priesthood of all believers comes directly from the New Testament and is tightly connected especially to Protestant theology. But what about this other idea? After all, we follow the Jesus who is more often seen as and functioning in a role as prophet rather than priest. What might it mean for all of us Christians to embrace this calling? The way I primarily see the gift of prophecy these days is twofold. First, one must have their imagination so formed and structured by the vision of God for creation that their thinking and acting is in line with that of God's, to the point that one might be called the Son of God in the non-divine meaning, that is, one who images God as we were all originally created to be, whether that's through Bible reading, contemplative prayer, or other spiritual practices, we are to seek out this formation of our imaginations. And then secondly, we are equipped, sent, and empowered to speak that word given to us in effective means within our cultural context to bring that vision of God to fullness in the world around us, to call out racism, sexism, discrimination, and false judgment of all kinds, to tear down unjust structures and systems of oppression, to lead people toward that vision which Christ set out before us. Might there be more Martin Luther Kings more Dorothy Days, more Dietrich Bonhoeffers, more little Christs walking our neighborhoods, speaking up in our legislatures, protesting in the streets if we took this more seriously. And so on this Pentecost Sunday of 2020, let us consider our joint calling to be deliverers of the word of God in the world outside the walls of the church. Amen. Let us join now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. 
Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through the waters of baptism, we have been joined together in the fellowship of Christ. And in the power of the Spirit, we are sent forth to proclaim words and deeds of love, beginning with the offering of our prayer, responding, Come, Holy Spirit. Wisdom from on high, be with the leaders of the nations, giving them discernment and patience as they guide the people they serve. For this we pray, Come, Holy Spirit. Mighty wind and holy fire, unsettle the hearts and minds of this church and diocesan community, that we may be challenged anew to hear your word and boldly, boldly live its message. For this we pray, come Holy Spirit. Blessed Advocate, may our ministries reflect your love for the poor in spirit, the needy, the sinner, those who are victims of injustice, oppression, violence, and abuse, and for all whom the Son of God gave his life, for this we pray, come Holy Spirit. Spirit of many tongues, may the peoples of the world find the common language of the heart where cultural and racial diversity find holy ground. And nations suffering under bonds of oppression discover the way to peace. For this we pray, come Holy Spirit. Breath of life open our eyes to the crying needs of our environment, that we and all the nations of the world may prudently and tenderly nurture our fragile home. For this we pray, come Holy Spirit. Holy Comforter, pour your grace into the souls of all who have died, that they may know your abiding presence. For this we pray, come Holy Spirit. Spirit of thankfulness, we offer our gratitude to Sunday school teachers and members of the choir whose devotion and creativity enrich the life of our community. For this we pray, come Holy Spirit. Filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, urging us to be people of passionate witness, let us continue our prayers. We pray especially for Tom, Lynn, Colleen, Marion, Shirley, Marty, Mason, Jay, Jerry, Lauren, Odell, Irene, Rich, Kevin, Raylan, Shayla, Mike, Alicia, Lee, and Doug. <clears throat> For all who have died in communion of your church, especially Carrie Wallace, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. For this we pray, come Holy Spirit. We also pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mike, our bishop, John, our priest, and Al, our deacon. On the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Trinity Martinsburg, and in our companion diocese in Columbia, 
We pray for the Reverend Jose Suarez A.A.'s Parochia Nuestra Senora del Carmen. At this time, if you have any prayers that you would like to offer, either silently or loud, you are invited. Lord, we pray for all of those in our church family and in the surrounding community who are dealing with all the outcomes of this pandemic. The frustration, impatience, the grieving, the worry, the loss of health or the loss of income. Be with them, Lord, and equip us all to be your hands and hearts and voices, reaching out to them, giving them love and encouragement. Strengthen us, Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. Hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us join together in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with the hope in the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is time now to recognize our birthdays. We recognize today Casper, Jeff, Jean, and Lucas, who have birthdays in this coming week. Let us pray the birthday prayer together. Gracious God, as we rejoice in the birthday of these your children, we pray that the year ahead will be one of blessing and peace, and that the year will bring continual joy in the knowledge of your steadfast grace and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Time for a few announcements. Our schedule remains fairly consistent. You will see in the back of your bulletin that we continue to have our book study and discussion um, of Cynthia Bourgeau's The Wisdom Jesus at 9 o'clock in the morning. You are, of course, welcome to join at any point. We will then have our morning prayer, which we have just finished, and then coffee hour will begin at 11. You can join via Zoom or conference call. We will also have our family night prayer tonight at 7, hosted by the diocese, and our two evening online prayers will be Tuesday and Thursday at 7.30 on YouTube, as usual. Our next uh, gathering for the youth is on June 4th. If you are interested in having your kids join as part of that as the youth group, then be in contact with Angela Carver, and they will be doing that again via Zoom. Then finally, our vestry would like to remind folks that as we continue to do the work of the church, even while distributed, uh, that we are seeking to continue the giving of pledges and offerings as you are able. And those can be sent in uh, via mail, or you can use uh, the online giving from our website, and we would greatly appreciate uh, the continuing uh, contributions to the ministry of this church. As for gathering, again, as you can see on this Pentecost Sunday, we have uh, added a few more folks. We're not quite ready to actually have um, a congregation come in yet, though. We're working on that actively, and we hope that in the next few weeks we will start being able to do a little bit more. But once again, uh, please just stay tuned to announcements as we try to do this, balancing our desire to be in community with the need to be as safe as possible. And now, glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen.